Dommage et décollage. We are live at the launch pad here at the Guiana Space Center for the 10th launch this year. Uh, we are just under, just over 19 minutes to launch. First of all, let's hear from Stefan Israel. Stefan is the chairman and the CEO of Ariane Space. And uh, Stefan is going to tell us a little bit more about today's mission. Over to you, Stefan. Thanks, Cathy. So, mesdames et messieurs, dear customers, dear partners, ladies and gentlemen, Ariane Space is delighted to welcome you at the CSG in the Jupiter Room for this new Vega mission, the second of the year with Vega. We are going to launch the Earth Observation Satellite Cocturk-1 for our customer Telespazio on behalf of the Undersecretariat of for Defense Industries of Turkey. Thales Alenia Space, as you know, and its Turkish partners built the satellite based on the Proteus spacecraft platform. As you can see on the control screen behind me, Vega is on the launch pad. The mobile gun tree was removed successfully three hours ago. All the operations of the final condon went smoothly. So we should be in a position to launch in a few minutes at exactly 10, 51 and 44 seconds AM. Following liftoff, Vega will head towards the north to separate the satellite on a sun-synchronized sun orbit inclined at 98 degrees with respect to the equatorial plan and at an altitude of 700 kilometers. GOKTURK-1 will separate 50 minutes after liftoff. The first satellite acquisition should come 12 minutes after separation. So, our launch is now just a few minutes away. Go Vega, go Gokturk One, and of course, enjoy the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Stefan Israel, ladies and gentlemen, the chairman and CEO of Ariane Space. So, uh, our program is coming to you today in both French and in English, uh, so you can tune into the French channel for our French speakers. And of course, you can find us on www.arianespace.com. So, here we are at the Guiana Space Centre, and uh, the base here is on the northeastern tip of uh, the Amazon rainforest, northeastern tip of South America. We're right uh, on the equator here. And uh, we have a family of three launchers. Vega is one of those. We see it there on the pad. The biggest one is, of course, uh, Ariane 5. Uh, you know her well. And the next one is Soyuz. And the baby of the family is Vega, the launcher that we are using today. And uh, this is actually Vega's eighth launch, uh, this uh, eighth launch in total, actually. So let's find out a little bit more about it. Um, it stands at 30 meters high. That's about the same height as one of the boosters on an Ariane 5. And uh, it weighs 139 tons. That's roughly a third of the weight of its big sister, Ariane 5. Today, we are carrying a payload of uh, one ton. It's our GOKTURK-1 satellite. There it is inside what we call the fairing of the launcher, the fairing being that pointy section in the nose. And GOKTURK-1 is an Earth observation satellite. Interestingly, Vega is uh, particularly uh, suited to launching Earth 
observation satellites into low Earth orbit. That's the orbit that's closest to our Earth. And uh, in fact, today is the fifth Earth observation satellite that uh, Vega will be launching. Um, it's a satellite, it's the first Earth observation satellite for the Turkish government. It's going to be able to image our planet in three days. Over to the head of project management at the Turkish Air Force, General Ibrahim Dulgar. Oh, good morning. This is Brigadier General Ibrahim Dulgar from Turkish Air Force. Today, we are launching Turkish Air Force's second remote sensing satellite, Göktürk-1. First, I would like to thank to all our partners, Turkish Undersecretary for Defense Industries, Telespazio, Thales Alenia Space, Ariana Space, and to all subcontractors for their dedication, support, and hard work. After seven years working together, we have been a team with all parties in this challenging project. And today, I wish the team to have a good luck with the launch. Success of the launch and satellite will mark our fruitful cooperation. Ariana Space is our partner for a very long time, and this is Turkey's sixth satellite launched from Kourou. The launch of Göktürk-1 satellite is a major event for both Turkish Armed Forces and our country. Göktürk-1 gathering high-resolution images from all over the world will be the key element for military and civilian news. We are all waiting eagerly for the celebration of today's launch for a long time. As a final word, I like the quote from the founder of Turkish Republic, great leader Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. The future is in the skies. Thank you. General Ibrahim. <laughs> General Ibrahim uh, Dulgash there. Uh, giving us the lowdown uh, on Gokturk 1. Now, the Guiana Space Centre is actually a pretty big place. It uh, covers an area of 750 square kilometres. That's about the size of the Caribbean island of Martinique, if you're familiar with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we call it the range. That includes the uh, launch base here, the, all the uh, facilities, and also the downrange tracking stations, which are dotted along the flight path. Uh, we do have a number of uh, control centres here at the range. Um, this is the mission control centre. There's only one mission control centre, and this is called Jupiter. And all these folk behind me are sitting in what we call the fishbowl. Uh, the fishbowl is this area here behind the glass. The operational teams, each one uh, with their own desk, uh, cool, calm and collected at this point um, before launch. People have been working for seven weeks to prepare for today. The payload composite has been transferred in ZLV from UPCU on November the 22nd and fixed on the launcher on the 23rd. At this phase, the launcher is fully integrated and is ready to be fueled with the relevant propellants. The fueling operation started from November 25th and finished four days later. At D-2, we performed the last operation before the final countdown. Each stage is armed with a pyro initiator. After the arming, quality team has performed all the final inspections to validate the nominal configuration of the launcher before the launch. At D-1, the launch readiness review has given the go-ahead for the operation of the chronology. Jean-Marc Durand has participated in the Gok Turk 1 preparation from arrival in French Guyana to the mating on the launcher. He describes the specific satellite transport operations. The first one is from the airport of Félix Eboué up to the preparation facility in the space center. The satellite is unloaded from the Antonov, only plane able to transport big containers, and then it is loaded onto a trailer thanks to a powerful crane at the airport. The second transport is from the preparation facility up to the filling facility. The satellite is transported vertically in a dedicated container called payload container. The transportation takes place at night to avoid the heating due to the sun. Once filled with propellant, the satellite is encapsulated by the fairing, which protects it from the outside environment. 
and this is in the fairing that the spacecraft will be transferred on top of the launch vehicle. As the transportation occurs during the daytime, we connect air conditioning. We could have said that this is the last satellite transportation of the campaign, but of course it's not, because the main one is a flight from the launch pad up to space. So there you have it. We are now nine minutes and 18 seconds to launch Gok Turk 1 on the pad inside the fairing. That's at the top of the launcher there, waiting there inside. That pointy section is called the fairing. This is one of those teams we were talking about in the Mission Control Center. This is the Flight Directorate. And they take all the final decisions in the event of any unplanned situations. And teams here looking at those big screens. These are the screens that everyone can see in the Jupiter Mission Control Center. It'll take Vega just under an hour to deliver Gok Turk 1, and there will be various different events during the flight. Today, the aim of this launch, VV-8, is to place Gok Turk 1 into a sun synchronous orbit. So the flight will be tracked by four ground tracking stations, Galio in French Guiana, Bermuda, Saint Hubert in Canada, and finally Nunersha in Australia, which allows to follow the spacecraft separation. The first part of the flight will be ensured by the three solid propellant stage, P80, Zephyr 20C, and Zephyr 9. The fairing separation will occur four minutes after liftoff during the Zephyr 9 flight. Once the Zephyr 9 separated, the Avum will be ignited during 380 seconds to place the launcher into a SSO transfer orbit. Then, after a ballistic phase of 40 minutes, a second Avum boost of 100 seconds will place the launcher into the spacecraft targeted orbit with an inclination of 98.1 degrees. Finally, Gokturk 1 will be separated 57 minutes after liftoff at an altitude close to 690 kilometers. Then, the launcher will be deserted with the third album boost 49 minutes after the spacecraft separation, and the mission will end with the last stage passivation before it's falling down into the Indian Ocean. So there we have it. That's what's going to be happening over the next hour or so after launch. But right now, we are getting closer to the liftoff time, our countdown, on the top right-hand side there of your screen. Today is not the first time that Arian Space will have launched a satellite for Turkey. They've already orbited five other spacecraft for them. They were the Turksat series. Those are telecommunication satellites, and they were launched between... 1994 and 2008. Back to today, though, and Gok Tark 1 is on the pad, patiently waiting to start its journey in six minutes, just over six minutes. Let's hear more details now about Gok Tark 1. Here's someone who knows it well, the project manager. Today is the launch of VV-08 Vega mission, which objective is to bring into SSO orbit Gokturk-1 spacecraft, the first Turkish governmental satellite dedicated to Earth observation. The launch compatibility demonstration and the preparation for launch have been initiated mid-2013 with the signature of a launch service agreement between Telespatio and Iron Space in the framework of a Telespatio turnkey contract with SSM final customer, the under Secretariat for Defense Industries of Turkey. Gokturk-1 satellite is a 1,600 kilo spacecraft based on the Proteus platform. It has been manufactured in Cannes by Thales Alinea Space and then tested in Ankara in the new TAI facilities before completion for shipment to French Guyana end of October. Today, Gokturk satellite will be separated after a Vega flight of about one hour, including two boosts of the Avon 4 stage. As a conclusion, 
I believe it is important to highlight that our customers and our Space teams have been working closely during three and a half years to achieve Gokto Quant's flight readiness for this eighth figure launch. We thank you for this strong, fruitful and interesting cooperation and we wish the best to the Gokto Quant spacecraft as well as your teams for the following steps. So a lot of people working very hard to prepare us all for today and that uh, liftoff schedule in 4 minutes and 20. This is the mission director Jean-Marc Durand. À tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. And this is the range operations manager Damien Simon. Top H0-4 minutes. And he's just announced the beginning of the synchronized sequence. That is the final four minutes for Vega, during which time computers are trolling all, controlling all the final checks in the countdown, and they manage a very impressive list of operations. Over here on the right-hand side, we're looking at what we call the status panels. All these systems across the base send the status of their health to the Mission Control Center here in Jupiter. And they are up here on these boards for everybody to see. All eyes on these at this point before launch. Showing us the status of three main systems, the rocket and the pad, the satellites, and the range. Remember we said the range includes the spaceport here and all the tracking stations which are along the flight path. And uh, sending their telemetry measurements. I remember I said that we have a number of control centers here at the base. We've been focusing on mission control, but now this is the launch control center for Vega, CDLV, the Centre de Lancement Vega. It's about three kilometers from the pad, and uh, these people are responsible for everything to do with the launcher and the pad. One of those teams responsible for operations on the ground, coordinating with mission control for final authorization to launch with their quality team, ensuring they follow procedures correctly. The other team's responsible for the flight readiness of the vehicle. And they oversee the operations from assembly of the launcher to the moment of launch. They also have a quality team, ensuring that everybody adheres to those procedures. And they're so close to the pad that they're actually protected inside a blockhouse. It's called the bunker. Getting closer, one minute and 45 seconds to launch. Vega standing tall there on its dedicated pad. Gokturk 1 waiting patiently inside the top of the launcher in the fairing. As we go through the final seconds in the countdown now coming to one minute. Attention pour H0 moins une minute. Top H0 moins une minute. We are one minute to launch. Our best wishes to all the teams, to all the Gokturk One teams and everybody in Ankara. To the industrial consortium led by Telespazio and Talisalenia Space, to the teams on the ground waiting to take over the satellite, and indeed to everybody involved in any way, shape or form in getting ready for today. Best wishes everybody, let's sit back and watch the launch. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité. Top, allumage P80, décollage. Je ne vais pas 
off. Vega blazing a trail over the sky here. He's just said we picked up the signal at the tracking station in Saint Jean, which is here at in French Guiana in the north. We're also tracking it with the Galio tracking station. Everything's normal on board, he says. Uh, Gokturk 1 is on its way. Heading out north towards the Caribbean. We broke the sound barrier after only 30 seconds. That's when we achieved Mach 1. The job of the first three stages is what we call the propulsion phase. To get us away from the gravity of our planet, which is making us all stick to Earth. It also makes it difficult to leave, so we do need a lot of firepower to do that. Look at that. We're burning the P80. Separation P80. Ah, we can see it separating there. Fantastic images, clear skies here today. And we are switching on the next engine on the next stage. That's called the Z23. That's going to burn for about 1 minute and 40 seconds. Z for Zephyro. Zephyro is an Italian type of wind. A bit like the Sirocco or the Mistral. And we are flying like the wind now at a speed of 2 minutes and 81 kilometers per second. Getting faster all the time. Altitude on the bottom left of your screen. 83, 85 kilometers high and climbing. And on the bot in the middle of the screen at the bottom there is the distance from the pad if you were to draw a straight line across the planet. Coming up now to the Kármán line, that's 100 kilometers above sea level, often thought of as the border without a space. Basically, the higher you go, the thinner the atmosphere becomes and the faster an aeroplane has to fly to travel. Uh, it, sorry, has to travel in order to stay up. Well, you have to be flying basically to mind boggling. 29,000 kilometers an hour to stay up. So around about this altitude, uh, the atmosphere becomes so thin that the air can no longer support vehicles with wings. Uh, it's the where as aeronautics ends and astronautics begins. Separation Z23. That there's a seven second delay between one being jettisoned and the other being switched on. Allumage, troisième étage, Zephyro 9. And we've switched on the third stage, the Z9. And the fairing has also been jettisoned. We don't need it anymore. The atmosphere is so thin, there's no longer much friction. And we can see Gokturk 1 for the first time. There it is, the gold structure at the front with those square solar panels. The tube is what remains of Vega. It's a small and competitive launcher and now fully qualified for commercial operation. Here we are in Kourou again, less than three months after the last successful Vega launch. And we have a new mission dedicated to an important export customer of Ariane Space. As you can see, Vega exploitation is ramping up. This is the eighth launch since the maiden flight in 2012, and Vega has now fully entered the commercial phase. After the first seven successful launches, covering a wide range of different kinds of missions, Vega has already established itself as a pillar of the European space industry, with its versatility, accuracy and reliability. This is the clear example of the great success that Europe can achieve when a strong partnership is put in place between key players of the space industry, such as Ariane Space, Avio Group Industries and the European Space Agency. Access in space has now become easier with Vega, and Earth observation customers in particular can now rely on Vega as a smart, reliable and affordable workhorse. We have now many customers to serve, 
many challenging missions to accomplish, and the meanwhile, we look at the future, eager to implement all the possible improvements that can make Vega launch services always better. To this aim, Vega C, a new, more powerful version of Vega, is under development, and Ariane Spass looks forward to its introduction in 2019 in order to provide an even better service to our customers. Now, finally, I would like to say thank you to our today customer for trusting Vega and Ariane Spass for their important mission. And let's go back to today's launch. A lot to look forward to there over the next few years with the upgraded version of an already popular vehicle. Separation du Z9. We have separation, uh, confirmation of separation of the Z9. The third stage has switched its engine off and jettisoned. So the main propulsion phase of the flight is now over. We've managed to get away from the Earth and we're about to start now the next phase of the flight. That's to take the satellite basically to its drop-off position, its drop-off point in space. That's the job of the upper stage. We call it the AVUM, or AVUM, uh, pronounced in French, getting ready to switch on its engine. Our flight path takes us due north, uh, heading up over the Caribbean, along the east coast of the United States and Canada, and then north over uh, Newfoundland and Perth Labrador Norman, to the west of Greenland. And there we've picked up the signal at the Bermuda tracking station, so we're over the North Caribbean right now. We're going to then uh, come back over the other side, uh, cross the Arctic, come back down over Siberia and start heading south again over Japan, the Philippines and Indonesia. And that finally down to the west coast of Australia, which is where we will start separating our satellite. So Bermuda is the third station to pick up Vega. The previous ones were Gallio and Saint-Jean-du-Maroni, uh, Saint which is in the north of French Guiana. And uh, we're using tele telemetry to track the vehicle. Basically, during the flight, Vega sends information to the ground stations along its path. Big, big dishes. Uh, listening out for it as it flies over. So the uh, upper stage has switched its engine on. It burns for about six and a half minutes. And this is the first of two burns. So we have now started the next phase of our journey. Avum, or Avum, has taken the wheel. Its job is to deliver Gokturk 1 to a very precise position in space, just under 700 kilometers above our planet. It's started what we call optimized guidance attitude. So once Avum switches its engine on, it, keep, it continually recalculates its position to make sure it's always on the right course. Telespezio is the prime contractor for Gokturk One, and, their, and with, along with their partner Talas Alenia Space, who built it under the umbrella of the Italian and French companies' strategic partnership. They call it the Space Alliance. Gokturk One is innovative. Uh, it's been manufactured by Talas Alenia Space along with their Turkish partners using their Proteus platform, as we've heard with a ground segment in Turkey, along with an assembly integration and test centre in Ankara. Let's hear from the two CEOs of the Space Alliance, Jean-Louis Gall of Talas Alenia Space, and first Luigi Pasquale. We are very proud to be here for the launch of Dr. One, that is a very important milestone for Telespazio. Dr. One is a very powerful system, letting the end user to have a remarkable capability in terms of quantity and quality of the images. The development of the system and of the ground segment was based on the experience Telespazio gained the domestic Cosmos Climate Satellite Constellation, which is for us a reference in the Earth observation systems. 
The system has been developed together with Thales Arena Space in the frame of the Space Alliance between Leonardo and Thales. The complementary capabilities of Thales Arena Space and satellite system and telespats in the services associated with them provides the Space Alliance all the assets needed to respond positively and effectively to the needs of the market, which today are increasingly focused on applications related to space technologies. I would like to take this opportunity to thank SSM and Turkish Air Force for the spirit of the string cooperations they have expressed in this project, as well as the industrial team that has delivered its competence and commitments. Finally, I would like to thank Avio and the Italian Space Agency for the realization of the Rega launcher that is now going to bring Gokturk into orbit. I wish to all of you good luck for the, a successful mission. It is a great honor to share with you this important milestone for the GOGTUR program. GOGTURK-1 is an outstanding satellite and we are proud to have built it together with the test center in Ankara. This spacecraft provides the Turkish Ministry of Defense a very high resolution optical observation system which can be operated as a sovereign object. At this level of performance, that is a world must. And it's a major benefit for our Turkish customer. Moreover, Thales Alnia Space is the first space company to deliver an anti-assembly integration and test center where the satellite underwent its qualification tests with the involvement of Turkish industries such as Thai, Aselsan, Tubitak and Roketsan. Turkey has now one of the most modern space integration center in the world. At Thales Alnia Space, we developed this GOGTURK system alongside Telespatio using our 30 years of experience in building optical and radar earth observation and to hand systems for national and European organizations. My warmest thanks to SSM and to the Turkish Air Force for the trust in Thales Alnia Space and Telespatio teams and for the unique quality of our partnership. Many thanks and long and successful life to GOGTURK. Thirteen minutes, thirteen and a half minutes now into our flight and um, we uh, had acquisition in the saint hubert tracking station in Canada. And uh, the town of Saint-Hubert is just outside Montreal. It's an aerospace industry there is very important and the Canadian Space Agency has its head office in the borough. The images we're looking at here on the right hand side of the screen you can see what we call the upper composite which is the Avum uh, with uh, Turk one attached are CGI images, computer generated images. Basically, they're showing us what the experts have calculated is happening to the launcher and the satellite. They plan a very precise schedule of events. Uh, it's based on extremely accurate predictions. And they put all of that information into the computer. And these images are then a simulation of those predictions. So everything we see here is exactly what's been planned to be happening in space. And right now, we can see the Avum switching off its engine for the first of two ballistic phases. Ballistic means without propulsion. So that means that we are traveling high enough and fast enough to cruise without the engine. This first ballistic phase is going to last for about 40 minutes. And you can see there that the Avum upper stage is twisting and turning. It's actually orientating the satellite. We've begun uh, the orientation phase. It's a 40, 34 second phase. The composite is putting itself into the separation orientation, so the correct position to separate the satellite later. There we see the Saint-Hubert tracking station 
on the east coast there of Canada, Quebec. Not only is Vega the smallest of the Ariane space family of launchers, she's also the youngest. This is her eighth launch today. She's built by the Italian company Avio for the prime contractor ELV. This is the eighth launch of Vega, the second of the commercial phase, which started just two months ago after the first six missions of the development phase. Vega is a European launcher developed by the prime contractor ELV, an Avio subsidiary. Vega is manufactured by Avio at 65% in Italy and for the rest across Europe by a team of selected and capable partners. Vega has set a record in terms of precision and reliability with seven perfect launches in a row from the maiden flight in 2012. Our launcher has demonstrated a unique ability to deploy multiple satellites in multiple orbital planes with unprecedented orbital maneuvers. I'm speaking to you from our factory in Colaferro, where we produce both Vega and its new version, Vega C. Behind me, you see the all new mandrel of the P120 solid rocket motor, which will equip both Vega C and Ariane 6. It will be the largest monolithic solid rocket motor in the world. We will soon start production of the first carbon fiber motor case of the P120. Today, we'll carry Vega into orbit again for one new satellite for the Turkish government. Gokturk 1 weighs about 1,000 kilos and will be placed by Vega in a low Earth orbit at 690 kilometers from the Earth. The Avia team, together with its industrial partners and Ariana Space, has once more the chance to demonstrate Vega's flexibility and reliability. I therefore wish the best success to the eighth mission of Vega. So there you have it, some very exciting and innovative technologies to be looking forward to over these next few fin years. Fin de visibilité normale du lanceur par la station de Saint-Hubert au Canada. Le lanceur est maintenant en phase balistique. La prochaine acquisition lanceur est prévue dans environ une demi-heure par la station de New Norcia en Australie. So he's just told us that we've now lost the signal perfectly normal uh, as planned from um, the tracking station in Montreal and uh, Saint-Hubert. And we now have a, a, a phase where we're out of visibility of the launcher and we will be picking it up again in about half an hour's time. We are presently in the ballistic phase. We are cruising without our engine. As we've heard, the prime contractor for Gokturk One is Telespazio. They're an Italian company based in Rome and a world leader in satellite services. Space has never been so accessible to the aspirations and projects of man. The world of Telespazio is a world of advanced satellite services within everybody's reach, providing protection of the environment, civil defense, transport security, telecommunications, navigation, and entertainment, but always improving the world in which we live. Telespazio is a joint venture between global technology giants Finmeccanica and Thales, sharing over 50 years of successful experience of space exploration and its applications on Earth. The company operates space centers and teleports all over the world. With more than 100 operational antennas, the Fuchino Space Center is the largest telecommunications center in the world for civil use. It is the heart of satellite operations for the company's 25 sites and 2,500 dedicated employees worldwide. Space is their home, and in their hands, every satellite mission is under control. With Cosmos SkyMed, 
The joint Italian Space Agency and Defense Industry program, Telespazio has enhanced its range of near real-time satellite radar monitoring services for maritime surveillance and emergency management. These new application services are a major part of the European Global Monitoring for the Environment and Security Program, GMES. In a fast-changing world, you need to always be in touch. Telespazio offers secure, reliable, and always available solutions globally, including applications and services for homeland security, oil and gas, maritime, telemedicine, e-government, and distance learning. Telespazio also plays a strategic role in military satellite communications through its involvement in the Italian Sicral Constellation and Athena Fidus program. You move across the surface of the Earth. We give you reliable points of reference. Telespazio is Finn Meccanica's key operator in satellite navigation and positioning services, a role confirmed by its contribution to the development of Galileo, the European satellite navigation system, and Telespazio's construction of one of the control centers that will manage the Galileo constellation at the Fushino Space Center. Telespazio creates exciting new solutions that improve the world we live in transforming what were once just dreams into everyday reality. And quite, I, I just think it's incredible to think how since we uh, first launched Sputnik, the first ever satellite back in the 50s, how our lives have changed, how uh, space has changed our lives. In that short time, we've turned the space around our planet into a, a giant workplace in the sky full of spacecraft enhancing our lives, quite something. We are in what we call the barbecue phase. The upper stage, the AVUM, is rotating as if on a spit, and that is to maintain the thermal homogeneity. Even temperature, temperatures all around, you can imagine that uh, when the sun is shining on you, it's very hot, and when you're facing away from the sun, it's very cold. So Vega sends, uh, as we've heard, information to the ground stations along its flight path, and they send that information here. It's called the CVI. It's the Real Time Visual Control Center, and it's here at the Guiana Space Center. These teams monitor how the flight's progressing in real time, and then they pass that information to the range operations manager here in the Mission Control Center and he's able then, or she, to announce the confirmations of the major events to everybody who's listening right across the range, so everybody in the tracking stations can hear that too. The teams also analyse the information after the flight to see how things can be improved, and they call that the flight level evaluation. So we are, as we said, in the first of two ballistic phases. We are travelling without the engine, and this phase is going to last another 29 minutes or so from now. We are rotating, as if on the spit, on the barbecue, maintaining our temperatures nice and even. We're going to uh, take a, a break during this ballistic phase and come back to you just before the AVM switches its engine on again. Our commentary will restart a few seconds before uh, 2.45 Universal Time, 14.45 Universal Time or Greenwich Mean Time. That's here in Kuru, 11.45 in the morning in... Uh, launch that was 25 minutes and 55 seconds ago we lifted off from the pad here at the space center it really was a super launch beautiful clear skies and vega shooting up into the sky 
So we'll be back 11.45 Kourou time. That's 3.45 in the afternoon in France, Italy, Standard Europe time. And in Ankara, 5.45 in the Ankara. afternoon. So uh, join us back here in about 27 minutes time. Bye for now. Applause and smiling faces here, always a good sign. Waiting now for official speeches, and uh, I can only assume we've had some good news here, and uh, the acquisition of the signal. Congratulations to everybody who's worked on this launch, on this satellite. And of course, our thoughts now to the teams on the ground as you take on your baby and start the launch and early operations phase, Leops. It's been a, a good campaign. Congratulations there to everybody in Turkey, in Ankara. Turkish flag. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Ariane Space is delighted to announce that, according to our internal launch vehicle information, the satellite has been separated as planned on its targeted SSO orbit. For the second time in less than three months, Vega performed flawlessly. Well done. Gok Turkwan is the first Turkish governmental satellite for Earth observation launched by Ariane Space. We are proud to have delivered today for Turkey, a long-standing partner for Ariane Space. Indeed, with today's mission, we will have performed six missions for Turkey since 1994. Telespazio, our prime contractor for this mission on behalf of the Undersecretariat for Defense Industries of Turkey, is also responsible for the satellite's integration and the associated ground segment. So I wish to thank Sandro Faglioli for being with us for this success. And I would like to express my gratitude to Ibrahim Dulgersh, representative for the Turkish Air Force, who honors Earth with his presence this morning in the Jupiter Center. Congratulations as well to Talenia, to Thales Alenia Space, who manufactured the satellite with its Turkish partners. Ariane Space has 11 more Thales Alenia Space satellites to deliver, so we will go on on this success. With this eighth su successful flight since its introduction in the Guiana Space Center in 2012, Vega has quickly demonstrated its excellence and availability at the service of both institutional and commercial customers. So, many thanks to Avio ELV, Vega Prime, for its tremendous contribution to this achievement, and more particularly to Avio CEO, Giulio Renzo, who attend attended this flight with us this morning. Ariane Space and Avio are partners for, for further successes, and let's be prepared to celebrate them together. So we are now at minus two of 10 successful launches. It will come quickly, I am sure. Many thanks also to the European Space Agency and national agencies with ASI, the Italian Space Agency as leader, for your support to the Vega program. So, yes. Uh, good afternoon. So, I'm, I'm not sure if in, in Ankara they can hear us, but uh, surely in uh, Fushino. So, here, but uh, you know that in Ankara and in Fushino, in Rome, all is happy to have acquired the satellite. So, before that, uh, I leave the floor to, to the general 
little girl. I want to thank personally all the industrial team that work at. So when I see the industrial team, the uh, transnational team formed by Telesalania Space and uh, Telespazio, uh, we work at very deep in this last month, very positive. So I want to thank all the people that work with us. And I leave it to the general. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon again. This is the second time you are seeing me again. First one on record, this is live. I'm Brigadier General Ibrahim Dulgar from Turkish Air Force. Today is actually an important and proud day for Turkish Air Force and uh, for Turkey. Göktürk 1 has just been launched to its orbit successfully and we have acquired, as uh, Sandro declared, the first signal from the satellite. I hope we are going to finalize the LEO phase, then switch to the in-orbit test phase uh, in coming days. And we are expecting the system to be delivered to us, I mean the end user Turkish Air Force, uh, as planned. Uh, Göktürk 1 is the second uh, Earth observation satellite after Göktürk 2 of Turkish Air Force, but uh, with high resolution cam camera and better capabilities. It will be used for both military and civilian purposes. And uh, I'd like to thank to all of our partners, men and women, who dedicated themselves to this program and the work hard to make this launch a success today. I would especially like to thank the Arena Space and uh, Kines for successful launch campaign today. I thank to Telespazio and Teles Arena Space for overall Gokturk 1 program, and also to all subcontractors that I cannot name all of them or just now. Finally, special thanks to our procurement agency, Under Secretary of Defense Industries of Minister of Defense Turkey, and we will have more satellite programs in the near future. We hope to have this uh, fruitful cooperation among all the parties, and we hope to have success in next launches. Thank you again on behalf of Turkish Air Force. As Mustafa Kemal Atatürk said, the future is in the skies and in space. Thank you. Good morning, Hervé Ami from uh, Thales Alenia Space. So I would like first to uh, thank very much uh, our customers, SSM and uh, Turkish Air Force, for their confidence in Thales Alenia Space and uh, since uh, the beginning of this program till this uh, step. And I trust that it is uh, the beginning of uh, a long roadmap. I would like to thank also Telespazio for the quality of our cooperation I think that is really the, uh, the Space Alliance, as we call it, in action. Uh, thank you to uh, INSPAS for this uh, very impressive launch. And uh, indeed, it is the uh, 145th satellite from Thales uh, Space, which is launched by, uh, by uh, INSPAS. So um, thank you for that. I have a special thought, thought for uh, the teams from uh, Thales Space in Cannes, in Toulouse, uh, in Roma, in Madrid, in Charleroi, uh, hundreds of people who have contributed to this uh, satellite. And uh, I know they can be very proud and uh, it is a lot of uh, emotion uh, for them today. Uh, not forgetting our partners from Turkish industry, uh, we have been uh, working hard together for this satellite, also for the AIT, the Satellite Integration Center in Ankara, that we, that we have built, and um, it is the first in the world that uh, this satellite, which is now in orbit, has been tested in our customers' premises in Ankara and this uh, integration uh, center. So, as our minister uh, Thierry Mandon said, uh, le monde gagne en orbite, uh, the world wins uh, in orbit. I guess uh, it is a, a proof, uh, evidence, uh, evidence today. So now we, uh, Gokturk 1 is in orbit, will deliver very uh, high resolution uh, uh, images for uh, SSM and uh, Turkish Air Force. And uh, we will be committed for the next steps until it begins uh, fully operational and for the, uh, the full, uh, this full roadmap with our customers. Thank you very much. So again, congratulations to all our partners for this new success. 
Uh, Ariane Space will be back in uh, CSG early March 2017 for Sentinel 2 uh, B and Copernicus with Vega, and it will be the ninth launch with Vega. But before, we will uh, come back uh, in a few days before Christmas with Ariane. Ariane will deliver uh, as soon as possible before Christmas for Star One D1, for the Brazilian operator Star One, and uh, for the Japanese operator Sky Perfect GSAT for GCSAT 15. So let's see each other in a few days here in CSG with Ariane. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Thanks a lot. Stefan Israel there finishing those speeches. And Gokturk 1 is on its way. The teams on the ground have taken over, flying their satellite. Congratulations to everybody. And as General Dulgash said, it's an important and proud day for the Turkish Air Force and for Turkey. A particular congratulations to them. It's the sixth satellite that Arian Space has launched for Turkey. And it took off from the pad here at the Guiana Space Center one hour and 22 minutes ago on board the Vega launcher, the light lifter of the Arian Space family. The teams on the ground are now operating Gokturk 1, which joins Gokturk 2 in space, and our very best wishes to them for the next phase of their operations. Good luck to everybody for the LEOPS and commissioning phase. Our congratulations to the Turkish government, to all the industries involved in creating Gokturk 1, led by Telespezio and Telezilinia Space, and of course to Ariane Space for the launch, and to the French space agency, Kness, who operate the base. I'm Katie Haswell. I hope you've enjoyed our live coverage. See you soon back here at the CSG. For now, goodbye. Three, two, one, jump, and décollage.